Doris Rafik Khan. Mr. Toastmaster, ladies and gentlemen, ever since I was a young child and read the story of Alibaba and 40 Thieves, I have been intrigued by doors. Alibaba used to say, open sesame, and the door to his secret cave used to open and let him in, and I used to be intrigued. Would the doors have opened if I was Alibaba? I doubt very much, because I have yet to develop a good understanding and relationship with doors. <laughs> if you think that doors are lifeless things, you are mistaken. Doors are actually very stubborn creatures. When I want them left open, they close on me. When I want them to remain just partly open, they refuse. And on a hot summer night, when I'm trying to go to sleep with my windows open, and if the doors in my home are not sleepy, they creak and make sure that I don't go to sleep either. <laughs> then you would ask me, why don't I just avoid doors? Well, how can you avoid them? They are all over the place. The front door, the side door, the back door, the garage door, the sliding door, the revolving door, the right hand door, the left hand door, the French door, the storm door. There is no escape from there. And even if you wanted to escape, you need a escape door. <laughs> As far as I'm concerned, doors are a health hazard. They've hit me right in my face when I've tried to go through them by being completely transparent and spotless. <laughs> my fingers have been crushed by car doors by collaborating with my children when they were young. <laughs> and it is the refrigerator door that is responsible for my overweight and not so slim waistline. In the corporate world, Policy and power are controlled by doors. Some executives have an open door policy, and some executives have a closed door policy. And some, like uh, the Alberta government, have a no door policy. <laughs> big decisions and big changes take place behind closed doors. This reminds me of a story of an old farmer who went to the big city with his friend to see his lawyer. The lawyer's offices were located in a modern office tower. While he was waiting in the lobby, he saw an old lady go into an elevator. The doors closed behind her, and some numbers flashed about the door. After a couple of minutes, the doors opened again, and a beautiful, shapely blonde walked out. <laughs> the farmer's eyes twinkled. And he rushed towards his half ton truck parked outside. His friend asked him where he was going. Where the heck do you think I'm going? Of course I'm going to go and get my old lady and put her behind those doors with the flash of numbers about. <laughs> and then, ladies and gentlemen, there are the automatic doors. Take the automatic door of my garage. It works fine during the spring and the summer and the fall. But come winter, especially if there is a blizzard raging outside, it either refuses to open or opens just partly and gets stuck. <laughs> you know what it really wants? It wants me to get out of my car at minus 40 degrees and kneel in front of it <laughs> and crawl underneath it and go inside and open the door manually. <laughs> You're also familiar with the automatic doors in supermarkets and department stores. These doors have uh, camera-like sensors located above them. You know the kind I mean? Well, these kind of doors are really mean to me. Just visualize, I've got grocery bags in both my arms, and as I proceed toward this kind of a door, it completely ignores me <laughs> until I look at this camera-like sensor and give it my best smile <laughs> and plead quite audibly, please, please, and then, and then only it opens at the very last moment and quickly closes behind me before I even fully step out. 
There is one more trick. The doors of my home play on me. They shrink. <laughs> Even in summer, when everything is growing and expanding, the doors of my home shrink. How else would you explain that when I buy furniture and appliances, the movers and delivery people have no difficulty in bringing them into my home? <laughs> but when I try to take the same items out again, the doors of my home shrink, no matter how hard I struggle. I ask you, God, why me? Why, oh why? I'm sure that Peter, Melody, and Bob, you don't have these problems with doors in your life. <laughs> You're always able to know whether to open the door by pushing it or by pulling it. Why is it that I always see the arrow and the small sign that reads, please use the other door, and when I reach the other door, it is locked anyway? <laughs> Why, oh why, Dale Carnegie did not write the book How to Make Friends with and Influence Doors. <laughs> Surely, there is someone amongst you who can help me, who can show me the trick of saying open sesame in a way that I can also get along with doors in my life. If there is someone out there who can help me, then the doors of my mind and my heart are open to welcome you, Mr. Toastmaster.